So welcome, uh, welcome everybody, and uh, welcome to uh, our latest uh, edition of Lockdown Learning. So um, I'm Rob Bluck here from uh, Three Hammers Golf Academy, the director, and today we've got Lyle Kirkham from Spark Performance. How are we doing, Lyle? Yeah, I'm good, thank you, Rob. Um, yeah, it's been an unusual time, so to speak. Um, so it's been uh, yeah, very much adapting to the situation, which I suppose over the past year or so, I think that's one of the big words that comes out, really. And uh, especially from kind of my services and moving them all online. Um, how has it been for you? Obviously, you, you, you mentioned off, off the chat around well, homeschooling as well. And Yeah. Yeah, it's been, uh, it, it's, it's been quite, it's, it's been, yeah, like from, for most, it's, it's, it's been tough. I'm not going to lie. It's been very difficult. Um, very busy with the homeschooling. Uh, I've got two uh, children. My, my youngest, my daughter's eight. So she's, uh, the primary school uh, school in there is, uh, is pretty full on. Um, my eldest there is doing his secondary school work, so he's got lots of live lessons, so that's, uh, that, that kind of works well. But um, yeah, I've actually, uh, it's interesting, so I've actually spent quite a lot of time as well working with uh, some clients uh, yeah. over the, the first couple of weeks uh, during uh, this lockdown period. And it's been, it's been quite positive in a, uh, in a weird kind of way, um, just chatting a lot about reflection really and, uh, and also planning for, for this year. So it's uh, it's quite it's quite fitting really to arrange this uh, this this chat with yourself uh, because I really do feel it's specific for this time of year and um, you know just recently when we had the uh, the webinar with uh, with your you good self and and Ray and Steve Thomas uh, we touched on you know, we spoke about an awful lot about you know developing the modern day golfer so today's lockdown learning really and uh, was. It'd be great just to uh, just to look at that a little bit a little bit closer with yourself coming from uh, a sports psychological um, side of things and also as well it's uh, be good to actually share with uh, with the audience um, the the great work that you've been uh, putting together of, of late which is is a way to actually really uh, look closer at mapping the journey and. Uh, yeah, helping uh, helping players get better. No, not just golf, but uh, in uh, in all all sports. Yeah, so. yeah, it's it's quite fitting that you said that actually, because we we I really really enjoyed that as well. And it was really good to kind of listen listen to different aspects uh, and how they contribute to the overall modern day golfer. And I suppose that it's now ever more than than usual. The modern day golfer has to adapt to the changing environments, and I think. Um, the way that I've kind of been kind of voicing it with certain a few clients in terms of our motivation has really been tested this year, but not just from a, um, a client perspective, but I can imagine it's similar from a coaching perspective as well, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's interesting because I've, I've actually got to know my players an awful lot better. Mm. Um, and yes, uh, some of my players are blessed to have, you know, simulators and, and the most amazing golf facilities in their, uh, in their homes, but uh, there's lots of them who've got less than I think. Um, and uh, it's been really interesting to actually get to know them, uh, get to know them better. And it's this time of year. Yes, we we go through the the actual developmental process, and um, we we sometimes we do obviously talk a lot about planning for the new season. But quite often, that's uh, it kind of gets swallowed up with all of the, uh, the the mechanics and the and the training that's going on this time of year as well. So, yeah, almost kind of like. Um not necessarily looking at what we can't do, but what we can do. And ultimately yeah. that, that situation there where it's probably allowed a lot of golfers a little bit more time to look at skill areas of development, but also those reflections and that growth opportunities as well, which is um, something that before, because as you said, we were working on mechanical changes and technical changes, and that took up a bulk of our development during this, as we call it, with the ugly zone sort of, uh, of, our, of, our, of our development. We've now a lot, got probably got a lot more opportunity to focus on some of the other areas of our game. Yeah, d d definitely. Uh, and it's 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 actually uh, it's it's really good to actually try and get that message across to uh, to a player as well. And you know, I think the uh, the key term is yeah, adaptability, isn't it? And yeah. uh, not not just us to try and structure <laughs> a, a session plan, but them to actually uh, give us. Um, you know the actual content to to actually help them develop as uh, as players. So yeah, uh, I, I suppose. I think, they... Sorry, you carry on. No, 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 absolutely. You carry on, John. Sorry. Well, I say I think uh, what what's been really important uh, for for my coaching for my players, but uh, but also also for my family as well, 
uh, and meat is uh, that just it's that structure. You know, this time of year when everything has been taken away, there's there's no school run in the morning. There's no first, you know, time to report for that first session. There's no team meeting uh, to uh, to go and uh, to go and chair or anything like that. Or to you know, there's you know, there is no structure at the minute. So I've uh, just tried and tried myself uh, and the message to get across to my, my players um, just to you know, get as much as a structure in place as we possibly can. You know, it's. No, life is kind of like that nine till five, isn't it? And uh, if we want to try and succeed in, in in anything, you know, we need to we need to we need to smash those goals, and we need to find that route to goal as well. So that's, uh, that's yeah, it. and I think that leads nicely onto um, onto kind of like the TPJ and the performance journal that I know we've we've been heavily involved with, and, and like you said, you um, and Steve have been massive influences with that as well, and it's. It's been um, quite refreshing to kind of gain different aspects on that as well. And I know we've had conversation after conversations and areas of improvements, developments, what we think will work. Um, and it'd be nice to share that with, with, with some of the viewers here at the complex. Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, for us, it's, it's giving somebody the, the tools to actually go away from that session time and uh, really uh, take on board and be accountable for their own actions. So you again you and i've discussed this at great length you know i've got uh, all types of clients different levels of, of abilities um have some clients with uh, well very different goals to others um and quite often i find i i've got i've got my, my my one type of client who relies on me really really heavily with regards to everything from the actual the the, the obviously the swing fixes the training process and um you know, they, uh, whereas I really want them to, uh, to take control of their own actions. Now, oh, here we go. So you've, uh, here we go, like yeah. this, like this. So, uh, yeah, and then again, I've got other clients who uh, kind of do, uh, do their own thing and they come back to me more, see me more of it as a fixer. And uh, I, you know, as where I want to try and meet them somewhere in the middle, really. So I want my guys to go away and find their own way, but also, um, having the right process to go and follow. And quite often it's kind of finger in the air job, really. So, yeah, I know what you're, you're asking me to try and do, but what do I do? It? Uh, how do I do it? Uh, how often do I do it? What does, what, what does it look like? Is it, is it bashing golf balls? And, you know, and I, I really, really dislike anybody uh, referring to golf training, certainly golf training with, my, with myself as, uh, as actual swing fixing and you know, picture perfects. It's, you know, it's, it's training the whole golfer and looking at all aspects of the, of the game of golf. Absolutely. And it's almost like um, personal development without actually knowing that you're doing it because within golf, within, within sport in general, there are so many transferable skills that you pick up without even knowing. I know we've had conversations, haven't we, around the things that we've learned through our journey into sport and how we've then started to actually apply that in life in general, um, which I think is the fascinating thing as well. And that's the reason why I'm always learning. I'm always growing as a, a, as a sports psychologist. And it's something that having conversations with people like yourself and all the, the brilliant coaches down at the Hammers, it really helps me to kind of develop the way that I approach the situation as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, for, for sure. It's, uh, we've, we've all had very different journeys. Um, yeah. And, you know, it's, it's quite interesting when you actually do look back to, uh, you know, you, your future is mapped out for you. And I'm a great, great believer in that. But, uh, yeah, it's uh, certainly, you know, you and I shared uh, several chats on, uh, obviously, my journey and uh, kind of where I was at and kind of how I've you know, really you know, taken that to, uh, to help my clients you know, as uh, you know, from a playing perspective, I, I guess really, I, I just, I'm so, the, my biggest regret really is, um, I wish I knew then what, what, I, what I knew, what I know now. I, I had to find out the hard way, unfortunately. I wish the support was around me, which there is around uh, my players now. Yeah, so, but no, um, just uh, what I'd like to do is just, uh, if, if we could just, uh, spend a, a moment here just to actually introduce uh, the, the work, uh, the great work which Lyle uh, has put together here in the uh, this the, the performance journal, um, which it's really going to give. We're, we're not going to give too much away. I'll let Lyle go through uh, this, but uh, it's just a, a real way to give a player uh, the tools to uh, to get better, uh, and also to communicate with uh, with us, their coach, uh, whether it's a golf coach, cricket coach, football coach. Um, but all you know, it just, there's a whole uh, there's a whole aspect to uh, to development here, and we don't want to have any regrets. We don't want to have any excuses. 
uh, and hopefully by uh, you can see the the work that we put together here it's going to help you along the uh, along the way so we're going to kick start then so where where did where was the tpj um how, how did it uh, how did it all come about then lyle so it came about and there's a slide on it here which i'll just come to because i know we've had a good conversation around there and obviously the modern day golf was part of it but what i was finding was as i started to filter into working with more and more clients across different areas of sports now that was within golf it was within cricket volleyball motorsports so as you can see there straight away there's there's a lot of vast um sports there with different environments and different requirements as well but ultimately the three words that kept popping up were accountability ownership and responsibility and what i mean by that is that the ones that tended to be more successful and not necessarily in performance levels but more kind of healthy in the way that they respond to um, failures, setbacks, and all of the uncertainty around elite level sports, or even not just, not just elite level sports, just sports in general, were the ones that were able to be accountable for their actions and take ownership and responsibility for their development. And that got me thinking. And another area was the fact that, and I think you can, you can back this up as well with regards to from a coaching perspective, is that when a player wants to make those changes, and then makes those changes, they should be able to evidence their journey that actually allowed them to get to that stage. And I was finding that a lot of athletes weren't. So the questions that I was asking were, how did you get to that stage? How did you show that improvement? And they, would, they were able to verbalize it, but there was no evidence to actually hold them accountable for that. So did the plan fail or did the plan work or did they fail to work to that plan? was essentially the question that I was asking myself. I think, and yeah, there, there with, uh, with, with the golfers, uh, I mean, just, you know, just looking at that themselves, athletes struggling to evidence their development. So probably the biggest thing for a runner is uh, obviously their, their, time in their, their time in the sprints, you know, so how, how quick did you get to the finish line? Uh, for golfers, uh, up until recent times, it's always been based on um, handicap, hasn't it? Now, handicap yeah. has completely changed now, hasn't it, with the, with the new regulations now? But... Uh, uh, recent times now, everything you know, we do need to measure it. So obviously, mm. using uh, measuring devices such as uh, such as TrackMan uh, during the sessions allows us to measure obviously ball speed, swing speed, uh, dispersion patterns, all that, all that kind of stuff. So quite often, I find as as a golf coach, players want that reassurance: Am I getting better? Yes. Well, your handicap would suggest you're getting better um, if you really, you know. But when we can actually measure. Uh, this is you 12 months ago. This is this, like whether it's speed related, as I say, or consistencies. This yeah. was you then. This is you now. So they can actually see the actual progress. But if we haven't got, you now everyone hasn't got access to uh, to a, a track man and, th and things like that. And I think we touched upon this uh, at the uh, the actual webinar with the developing the modern day player. Yeah. Actual recordable practice. Yeah. yeah. So actual recordable practice that we can actually go away document that. Uh, you know the actual development side of things so yes we this was us two, two months ago couldn't chip it for yeah. top. these are my results now absolutely and i think that is where where from a golfer perspective we are in a really good position in terms of the amount of rich data that is available to us is mm -hmm. is very high um in comparison to other sports i know for example like within cricket which i do quite a bit of work with as well if you don't have a scorer or if you don't have someone there that can track the ball by ball and then give you the strike rate Unfortunately, you don't have access to that data. Um, whereas golfers, if they want to make this amendment, they can track their number of puts per round. They can track the fairways in regulation. And because a lot of the these sort of behaviours are within their element of control, it gives us an availability. But like you said there, that also as well, one of the important ones is those training sessions, those range sessions, those sessions that aren't necessarily competitive practice, but they are contributing to your development it's really important that you track those and you evidence them, but also reflect upon them as well. And that's where a lot of this was coming around with goal setting, but also around the reflection methods. A lot of athletes were, they were acquiring so much information from an experience. It would probably be more confusing, more, more than valuable. Um, and what we mean by that was they tended to focus on a lot of irrelevant information and irrelevant information are things like uncontrollable factors, so just things that, like the weather, how the weather influenced their performance. Now, the weather is an uncontrollable factor, so it's irrelevant piece of information because we don't have any influence over it. 
-hmm. And I was finding that when we helped athletes switch towards the more relevant and give them a give them a process and give them a structure from their reflection that enabled them to acquire this information, they're more likely to be able to use it. Oh, for, 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 for sure, yeah. It's uh, again, it, I, I can't I can't stop thinking about you know the the kind of block practicer and the example yeah. that we that we used and uh, people are very good at what, practicing what they're good at as well aren't they and you know getting it's but it's it's changing the habit and creating the right habit yeah yeah absolutely and then going up to that, the one before around a lot of athletes so you, you probably find this as well when they come to you they know what they want to improve mm -hmm. they have an idea of the swing the change the change in their game that they want to make but do they have never considered why they want to make that change yeah and the reason why why is so important is because that's our motivation. So if we think about, um, I want to, I want to, I want to be able to stop um, hooking the ball or slicing the ball, whatever it is of that swing change. Now I know what I want to improve. I don't know how I want to go about doing it, which is why I would seek the advice of a PGA professional. Mm -hmm. But if I understood why, well, my why could be, do you know what? It might give me. It might allow me to enjoy my golf more because I'm not having to spend so much time in the trees looking for my ball. Mm -hmm. I might be able to actually enjoy the moment and not get not come off the golf course more frustrated than when I walk on. Yeah, I think you're touching a good point there. I mean, a lot of golfers they've they've they've, they've got a pretty good idea of what they are trying to do with their golf game, um, but they where they really would fall down is why they're actually trying to, yeah. to do it. Yeah. That's so. it. They've all got their, uh, you know, I find, you know, players have always got their understanding of, you said, you know, why they hook the ball, you know, mm. what they're doing. This is what they are doing because what's, what's actually pr promoting that hook. But, yeah, where is that actual root cause? You know, why is that root cause of the problem? Where, where, where is it occurring from? That's it. And players that understand their why are more likely to commit to the process of actually the journey towards that change. Mm -hmm. Because as Steve mentioned in the modern day golfer, that, that change is not linear. It's not a case of we set the target and then we achieve it. There are pitfalls, there are speed bumps, there are U-turns where that's where that that's where our motivation is tested. But if ultimately we have an understanding of our why and we use that why as our motivation, we are more likely then to be able to get out of that U-turn, to get to turn around even further, um, to get out of that pit and actually go up and, and continue to commit to those actions. Mm -hmm. but also as well and like you said there there was a there was a lack of structural routine to development and not always the case and especially within within the, the clients that we have at the free hammers golf complex i don't see that as a, a major thing but this was obviously just a generalized consensus from the other sports that i worked within as well um but yeah so off the back of that obviously we continue to have conversations but i came up with the performance journal and this was to help athletes essentially develop accountability, but take ownership for their development. Mm -hmm. So the aims of the performance journal, and we, we shortened it to TPJ, were to develop accountability, and as we've mentioned there, the ownership and that responsibility. To help the athletes and the clients explore their meaningful behaviours. Now, what we mean by meaningful behaviours is essentially beneficial behaviours, the ones that are going to help them get towards them where they want to. Um, and this is where the reflection comes in as well, because if we've got so much information available to us, some of that information is irrelevant and that can lead to unhelpful behaviours. Whereas we want to access the relevant and the, the um, useful information that is going to contribute to our goals. Mm -hmm. Effectively reflect. So a big part of the performance journal is our ability to reflect and we get them, we get the, the, the user to experience different types of reflection in a different way. Um, structure and schedule your development more efficiently as well, because ultimately if we can, especially this time as well, and we've mentioned that big word adaptation, ultimately this is a great example here because a lot of athletes, a lot of individuals might have experienced that the days merge into one during this lockdown. Whereas if you have a structure and you schedule your days, you are probably going to be more reflective and more productive mm -hmm. with, your, um, with your time. And that's exactly what the TPJ looks to try and do as well. Give you a structure that enables you to be more productive. So it says here, turning the word accountability into a process. 
And the reason why is because I always feel accountability is that throwaway word to an extent. It's something that's used quite heavily within the media. And how, and that was one of the questions that I said to myself, I said, how do I, how can I turn that into a process a system that will enable you to contribute to your development? And this is what we came up with. So this is the system that we use within the performance journal. So that first step is identity, almost saying, what is your why? As we've spoken about the importance of your why. The next stage is authenticity. So what makes you different? Um, what are your values? What do you stand for as an individual? that's going to contribute to your overall development. And then the last one is alignment. So how do those values align with your behaviors? And ultimately it's a three step process that if we kind of hit those three areas and we have a better awareness, we are more likely to be more accountable for our actions. Great. I'm mean, just looking at this as well. I mean, uh, if everybody, uh, wants to be, you know, wants to swing it like the Adam Scotts of this world, don't they? And, you know, perform like the, the, the Tiger Woods, but there's only one Adam Scott. There's yeah. only one Tiger Woods. Um, everybody is so unique. Uh, it's, it's interesting just looking at some of the social stuff, which people, um, people are sharing this you know, during this lockdown. And uh, there's so many coaches uh, are actually, uh, you know, getting into, uh, it's quite an interesting debate really about swing techniques. And you, mm. you look at the you know, back of the likes of, um, the classics from Hogan to Palmer's to Nicholas uh, to uh, you know Mac O'Grady, you know some of the, uh, the, the every, everyone is different. You know everybody is so different. Like the modern day Matt Wolf, um, every you know every everybody is just unique. So uh, this is uh, you know when we cannot try. Yes, yes, it's great to have role models and try and yeah. you know, follow uh, you know the, the the Tiger Woods or the Rory McIlroys of this world and do everything that they do. But they are unique. You are unique, and it's trying to find uh, you know the real you, and what's going to work for you. Because what what, what may work for you may not work for uh, for the next guy. So it's uh, it's just a, such a, a massive area here. But when you really look at it, you know we can really start to see uh, the route to goal. Yeah, and that's it. And that overall accountability. And like you said, there golf is one of those beautiful sports where. There are, core, there are core areas that you need to be able to, to kind of work on to develop a good swing. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, there's so many areas for creativity and there's so many areas where every person's swing is, is slightly different to everyone else's. Um, and that's one of the great things there as well. But ultimately, then that enables you to create that accountability because they know the core values that will contribute to their performances. They can hold themselves accountable to that because they know They've got a bit of clarity in the way that they think and the way that they feel. Yeah, the, the golf swing ain't going to get the golf ball in the hole. That's it. Yeah, the golf. Swing, yeah, the uh, again, it's a, it's an interesting uh, example which I use a lot to uh, with my uh, students as well, uh, and certainly my own son. Uh, but you know, when when I look back and you look at those uh, the sporting greats, you know, the sporting greats weren't always the most skillful. Yes, golf is a, is a game of skill, and you'd, you'd argue that you know, the most you know, the, the legends of this game had such a, 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 mast, a vast amount of skill. But generally, those ones who, uh, who go on to achieve great things, who have great careers, it's not so much what, you know, it's, uh, it's their, actual, um, their actual attitude to actual yeah. development as well, and, and it's following that process. You know, it's the kind of Cristiano Ronaldo, you know, is last, first on the training ground, last to leave. Yeah. You know, they're exactly, you know, Messi, David Beckham, um, Michael Jordan, you know, they're, yeah. they're, it's all this similar, but they work their absolute backsides off and they, they found that process that works for them. Absolutely. I think the one that comes to mind, I've used an example, is uh, Roger Federer. Um, yeah. He used no ceilings approach where he never had a target to, so some athletes might have a target to, to be number one in the world. Um, and I always say, well, what happens when you reach that target? What yeah. happens to the ceiling? You put a ceiling on it and you hit the ceiling. Um, whereas he, he, even if he, even when he was number one in the world, he actually just said, right, I just want to get better. 1%, 1%, 1%, ultimately 1% and hold himself accountable to his development. Mm -hmm. And I think that was the reason why he was able. And we see that as well, don't we? With the elite level athletes, they are able to sustain it for a high time, for a long amount of time, sorry. Yeah. Um, and that accountability will definitely contribute to their overall success. Mm -hmm. 
Brilliant. And then also as well, we also spoke about the importance of reflection as well. And a reflection is something that as humans we do. We it, we instantly gain feedback in body language when we when we present a behaviour to someone. We get feedback from that. That's a way of reflection. But ultimately, in our journeys to development and achieving our goals, reflection is probably the most pivotal skill um, to to use. But also, it's a skill to be able to acquire the necessary information. So, athletes and users will be asked to use quite a bit of reflection within the TPJ and the Performance Journal. But each one has got a structure and a framework to work towards that will enable you to gather the necessary information. So, we split it into four areas. So, the first area was the training log. So, this is when we engage in training um, and any non competitive practice. So this might be just social rounds on the golf course, or it might be a range session. And essentially we're looking at three things, which is purpose, reflection, and growth. Purpose is what's the purpose? What are you working on? Reflection is how would you take, what are the, what's the learning that you would take from it, from that situation? Did you achieve your purpose? And your growth is how are you going to use that learning? So again, it's a nice, simple framework. It's not too complicated. And I think with this one, it could have been very easy for me to to go into so many details and, and so many questions and bombard the user with questions that they lose sight of the simplicity of reflection. And that was one thing that I wanted to actually suggest is that these, these reflections are very simple, but they are very effective. So we've then got the training log, but we've also got the competition log. And we spoke about this, didn't we, around gaining that key statistical evidence as well, which is the evidence essentially to say that like, this is how I got to a stage, so my performance was this. These are the key things that contributed to that. And the no. next stage, sorry, Rob. No, 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 you, no. Yes. Yeah. And then the, um, the next stage was the big picture. And this was a really important one for me to put in as well, because it can be, because this, the, the performance journal is very much focused on the athlete, it was important for me to outline that only a small percentage of that sporting identity makes up their overall identity as a human, as an individual. And I wanted them to explore some of the meaningful behaviours that will enable them to grow as a person. Now, that could be acts of kindness. It could be offering to give someone your support, offering to give your time up to network with someone. Now, in the big picture, that is, that is developing you as an individual. That is developing you as a person. Um, and I wanted them to explore the different things that they are doing to develop them as a person and not just as a sport identity. But also as well, Fort Tracker. And this was a really important one as well. So on, in the TPJ, you're asked to complete a Fort Tracker um, two weeks, so four weeks before your competition and two weeks before your competition. And this will enable you to highlight any changes or adaptations that you want to make to your training structure. Um, based on how you're feeling currently. So it might be a case of you've got a big, you've got a club championships coming up in a month's time. At the moment, I'm not feeling too confident. I think I need to work on this, I need to work on that. All of a sudden, you are holding yourself accountable to that by making it identifiable and actually saying to give myself a best opportunity to, to do a good result, this is what I need to do. And these four trackers are, are really helpful in that process as well. So those are the four methods of reflection that you will be asked to do within the performance journal. And, and as you can see, each one contributes to developing you, uh, not just in a sporting identity, but as a whole person. And I think that's really important. I think with these as well, it's uh, such an open end conversation, isn't it? It's, it's very much, it's, it's control. You know, they can control you know, this, this is, you know, they can, they're in control the controllables. Yeah. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's a simple structure which can be elaborated to whatever way they want to, they want to go with it. Um, I find quite often with players when they do fall down because there is no st simple structure in the first place. Yeah, you've, uh, you've got to break down those habits of the lifetime. And the, you know, when, when we, uh, the, the world returns back to normality, when people return back to school, we go back to our jobs. Uh, we, you know, all of a sudden then, uh, do we go back to the same, uh, range user you know who does the same thing week in week out um or would now be a really good time to think about how we could possibly use the time wisely you're talking here how do we reflect 
Now, what I've been doing with lots and lots of, of my players is uh, you know, game ratings, but asking them just to think of all aspects of the game, complete off the wall parts of the game as well, like you know, hitting the, um, hitting the golf ball and uh, striking a ball uh, when the ball's way below your feet. You know, chip, you know how, how, how do you rate yourself on getting out of the trees? You know, how do you rate yourself on hitting that low, that low shot below head height? How do you rate yourself on hitting that, that high parachute shot which drops and stops within a couple of feet how do you how do you rate yourself on uh, uh doing a rules test you know how you know so all aspects of the uh you know, so many aspects of of the game uh and what quite often when if I, I, I chuck some random stuff at some of my clients there it does kind of it brings it makes them think about ah right okay or well, perhaps yeah I, I i need to be better at that so yeah, I think that this is the the big conversation starter, or the uh, the, the you know going to the thought tracker, or yeah. could this provoke some positive thoughts for when you do get back to golf? Is let's think about all those aspects and let's prioritize and actually what do you need to get better at? Yeah, that's it. And, it and as a coach as well, you can look at this as well. And I think like we've spoken about around from from your perspective, the one thing that you would like to see more more from is is actually a schedule and their schedules oh. so that you can you can then because these are conversations for you aren't they as well so as a coach the, the client can bring this to, to, to a, a lesson you can allocate maybe five ten minutes at the start of the lesson to say right how have you been getting on what are your reflections Massive. you can have a read through and it's just conversation starts and that might lead to um an area of, of change within that lesson but ultimately yeah. it's massive mass massive for me i think uh, this all came about really in in the uh, the last with lockdown two uh, back in November, when that was the time we we kind of I started the reflection process with lots of my students, and obviously last year, certainly from a national and and a, and a pros perspective, there wasn't that many competitions to play in, mm. um, so uh, so there wasn't that much to actually look back at. So what the the few comps that we did look back at, we actually got some really good information out of because we really ch you know, cherished those competitions. Um, but again, one of one of my biggest regrets and an area which I feel I can develop as a coach is by having a much better understanding of my player's schedule. Whether it's a club golfer, uh, whether it's their two medals a month or a medal and a stable foot a month, or whether it's a, whether it's a pro, so when they've got their, their, their tour school, when they've got their first event, it's working towards those, the, those events. Uh, and then it's not only so we can actually schedule the practice better for those events, so looking at the type of golf course they're playing, looking at the type of conditions I like to play in, um, but also as well, it's just that, that kind of like good luck message just before as well, yeah. you know, it's, which I, 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 the amount of players who I work with, it's, it's so difficult to try and personally keep in contact with everybody as, as hard as I try. But um, I find working with a player and understanding their schedule and actually sharing their schedule with me, uh, yeah, it's, it's, that's one area which I want to improve in 2021 for sure. Absolutely. And it has a huge influence as well because you can prioritise specific areas within that leading up to those tournaments. Like you said, there, you can help them formalise a plan and then go about putting that plan into action. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah, and, and as part of that as well, and we've spoken about that schedule there as well, is a weekly planner. Now, this is another project that we, we also bring out alongside the, the, the performance journal and it just contributes to it, it contributes to your scheduling and scheduling is, is proven to improve productivity and time management skills and within those specific areas we talk about non-negotiables which are your fixed dates and it's, it's acceptable within this to, to to talk about things like school work college work um, general work or any fixed training dates as part of that but also planned activities so those are the next steps as well in terms of these are things that aren't necessarily uh, not aren't necessarily planned there might be things like that can crop up within the week. So it might be like a message saying, fancy going for a rain session here, um, little things like that. But then also as well, it helps you identify free time, switch off behaviours and self-development opportunities. And that is probably one of the most important areas in the fact that we probably need to give ourselves free time and, and the ability to switch off. Um, and this all adds sorry, to flexibility in our programme. So if you've got flexibility in your schedule, that enables you to adapt to anything that should it arise. 
Um, and one thing that we don't want to do is be so fixed in our schedules that if something uncertain happens to happen, then we panic and we don't know how to fit everything out in with our schedule and then we start panicking and then actually we end up probably missing out on a, a lot of opportunities because of it. Whereas if we allow ourselves flexibility in our schedules, we can adapt and we can adjust like we have done with these lockdowns. We have adapted, we have adjusted, but that comes through developing a structure and a routine. Yeah. No, I, I, I couldn't agree with, with you more. And I think that that free time and that switch off time is, is so important. But as I say to uh, a number of my, my students, and I say it's through any, any walk of life, whether it's schoolwork or uh, your actual day-to-day -day business running or, or whatever you're doing, uh, you, you'll enjoy that free time and that switch off time far more if you achieve what you set out to achieve. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, if we if we kind of if I kind of I refer to it as the plodding the plodding approach, you know, you yeah. keep plodding along and doing this, and all of a sudden you can't switch off. You're worried about what you haven't done. That's it. Yeah. yeah. And if you're accountable for your actions and you know you couldn't have done much more, then it makes that a lot easier conversation to have with yourself. Whereas if you're someone that likes to blame everyone else for your um, situations. And as we call it, uh, um, within the TPJ, we use a continuum. And that continuum is on the left-hand side, we have the victim. And then on the right-hand side, we have full accountability. Um, and there's an example in there of athlete A and athlete B and stuff like that. But that's a great example to, to kind of put yourself where you're at at the moment, but also where you want to be. Um, because we would like to be towards more the right-hand side where we are accountable for our actions. For sure. So and the I've... next one. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so the next one is the competition schedule. And this really links in with what we said as well around the importance of just having an awareness of, of the competitions that you would like to go to within the next year um, and then holding ourselves accountable. But developing that little bit of preparation as well beforehand by uh, filling in the key pieces of information, such as the time, the date, the location. Just by doing that, which is a simple activity, you're starting to put yourself in that development area and actually saying, right, okay, this is what I probably need to do. It's getting closer now. Um, right, I need to fill in my thought tracker and I need to fill in my priority within the training log as well. Um, so again, working on structuring your training priorities, engaging with the competition log to build reflection and accountability skills, um, which again are vastly important in any area of development as well. So this one actually comes in a, um, it's initially an A3 sheet, but I'm thinking of changing it to an A4 sheet just to make it more logistically um, better for, for the clients. But um, this one is something that you can put up in your in your room as well. I know I've got mine up in my room just next to me here, and I'm planning on when I get my, my data for, for when golf courses can open, but also when the cricket starts. I know that's the first thing I'll be filling in. Cool. No, I know uh, it's uh, it's great to it's great to see this. It's great to finally present it as well with you uh, with your allowance. I know that a lot of time and effort's gone into this, and I can only speak from uh, from my own personal experience of uh, many of my players who've uh, had the pleasure of working with uh, with Lyle, and uh, you know, it's very it's it's important that that a player can see their own route to uh, to goal, and they 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 must uh, consult their their coach, their mentor whether it's myself, whether it's a Steve Thomas of this world. Um, but, you know, I strongly recommend if you're really serious about developing um, your, your golf game or your, your chosen sport, spend some time to uh, have, you know, getting, reach out to, uh, to Lyle, reach out to myself. Um, I know that Lyle, uh, we're now, this is now being published. It's going out there to the, uh, to the market. Uh, we've actually uh, working on our own version of this to go out to our, our academy members which will include a, um, a session with yourself. Is that, is that right, Lyle? Yeah, that's it. So, yeah, so moving on to, um, and as I said, I think it's, it's fantastic. Like you said, you, yourself, Steve, and the other coaches have been really collaborative in, the, in, the, in this process as well. And I know I wouldn't have got to the stage of, of actually being really, really confident about this product without the help and advice of yourself, Steve, um, Rory, John. Paul, everyone at the Free Hammers, essentially, that, that has helped in this process. So from my perspective, thank you very much for that and for your help and guidance. Um, I know from that supporting network as well, there's also the Ask Spark in there as well, which was, our, well, which was your idea, essentially. You give the credit. <laughs> um, nearly said our idea, and then I realised, actually, no, it was Bob's idea, which was a fantastic um, concept. So we want, we want to actively 
encourage as many users to ask us any questions because um, ultimately some of the activities they, they might not be they might be more difficult they might be easier for certain individuals but we want you to, to be able to, to get in touch with us and actually ask us any questions because that's how we form these networking skills and that's how um, we learn off each other and we, we look at our journeys and all that sort of stuff and that's how we make the most of this the performance journey as well is by accessing our support network and it, it, we do discuss the, the importance of that within there. Cool. So, um, yeah, and as you mentioned there, so today's offer really, what, what you'll get, and we're calling it the elite package for our development, is um, so each individual will get the performance journal, which is what we spoke about, which has got all of the activities that we previously spoke about. You'd also get a weekly planner alongside that as well, um, and also a competition schedule. So those are the three items really that, that are on sale and part of the elite package. But then ultimately as well, as part of that, we want to offer a 30 minute one to one virtual session, uh, working through these activities and setting some of the targets, but ultimately getting that awareness as well. And actually saying that this is a, this is a collaborative journey um, and it's a good opportunity for you to ask away uh, questions that you might have had around sports psychology, um, but also within the, the, the performance journey as well and, and looking at setting targets, looking at ambitions, your journey into, into golf as well. So, um, it's a really good opportunity for myself as well. And that's why I wanted to offer it to, to get to know the, the, well, the, the users and the potential buyers in more detail as well. So um, that normally from a, from a kind of cost perspective and, and recommended retail price, would normally cost in and around £75, um, including the, the one-to-one. Um, however, that's not really the case today. Um, and like I said, as a, as a kind of a thank you to the Free Hammers for providing me with a service and, and being able to give me a platform to do these sorts of stuff and, and speaking with yourself I think realistically I want to offer it for, for, for £25 um, for every member that, that is obviously interested with this as well and that will um, obviously that's not included with the postage and packaging but that's something that we can consider anyway but ultimately I think that's a um, a good opportunity for people to as we said there with, with their development taking control of that and their ownership as well so uh, that's the offer that I wanted to present to to people today. No, that's great. No, uh, with regards to uh, no, thanks so much for that, Lard. With regards to the, the posting packaging, uh, we'll uh, when we finally get back, we'll we'll certainly have uh, have uh, carry our own stock at the Three Hammers. So that'd be good for uh, for us as as the coaches there to actually. Uh, uh, should you wish to uh, to take us up on this, uh, perhaps you contact Lyle on the details, um, which uh, would complement this uh, this chat. Um, or feel feel free to uh, these are actually we're going to get these uh, to go on our website as well so uh, any questions you know get yours today ask uh, ask spark we like that so uh, yeah always uh, if in doubt just always ask yeah ask, ask that question but yeah, no, that's um, it. i think uh, again just going back to uh, a, a term i put in it earlier the golf swing doesn't get the golf ball in the hole you know there's uh, there's a certain whole whole host of as uh, aspects to get that golf ball in the hole it's not all about, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's not all about golf related, but if we can, uh, if we can put those pieces together, uh, if we can see that route to goal, um, you know, you're certainly going to have a, a much brighter, a much brighter future. So, you know, from, uh, from myself, I'd like to thank, uh, thank you, Lyle, for, uh, for coming on and uh, presenting the, uh, the TPJ. It's been an absolute, it's been, a, it's been great to work with you and, and several discussions to, to actually get to this stage now we can get it out there and uh, help our clients really uh, yeah take you know, take um, control of their own actions be accountable and uh, let's, uh, let's 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 make you better you know let's uh, make you better let's enjoy the uh, the game uh, or whatever game it is that you uh, that that you that you're playing um, in this aspect a lot of it's going to be golf I would have, what I hope to th hope to think um, but uh, yeah thank you uh, stay safe everybody thank you Lyle and uh, we'll see you um, really soon Cheers, guys. Cheers. Yes.